the particular hot issue right now with zoning is this uh, MXW, the mixed use waterfront, which is the zone the Planning Commission created as a new zone for the town to, to go in on uh, Easton Point. Well, the, the Planning Commission spent two years working on this uh, zone, which is in place. The MXW, it's called the Mixed Use Waterfront Zone, which is, has been applied to the annex properties, uh, and I think there's nine sites, four, four different owners on Easton Point. But the, as other properties get annexed in over time, they'll fall under this zoning category as well. And I think the Planning Commission did a terrific job in this is a really innovative land use uh, application of the zoning. They've got the, it's broken into four tiers. There's a, a less dense and specific use zone waterfront and then there's a water view with an increased density which allows residential. There's no residential allowed next to the waterfront. It's all commercial and um, open space. Um, there's a, a zone for the Port Street Corridor leading down to the waterfront and then there's an, basically an inland zone which is the highest density of all four. Um, and so that zoning's in place. It was uh, almost universally supported. There's always somebody in opposition but the Planning Commission worked diligently with not just the public at large, but they spent a long time conferring with the Tolva County zoning uh, and I think did a really good job about getting input from the community on what to do down there. It's, a, it's importance to the community is kind of self-explanatory. It'll, it'll, it's the only waterfront Easton has. Most of the opposition, and this, this goes back of, uh, six or eight months now when, we, when the town council approved the initial zoning, the, through the process most of the concerns raised were about too intensive development allowed along the waterfront and that mainly in the form of buildings that were too tall that would basically set up a wall along that uh, waterfront, not enough green space, open space, and there was a considerable amount of concern raised about noise levels. Um, one of the existing commercial properties down there uh, was looking to expand their use and open a restaurant, which I, hopefully they still will do, but there was concerns that it might be a a late night bar music and the water, uh, music carrying over the water would disturb because the surrounding areas, as you probably are aware, on uh, both sides of the creek are all residential. So that was a major concern. But the, the uh, Planning Commission with the Tolva County Planning Commission worked to put in place some pretty strict parameters about noise, not just levels, but times. I mean, no outside music after 10 o'clock kind of stuff, and they did a really good job. I think by the time we got to the end, and again, it was a two-year process, most people were on board. But at the same time, the Planning Commission and the planning staff knew that uh, this was a good beginning step, but not the end step. And so they almost immediately started to work on tweaking the ordinance that was in place and their adjustments took the form of bonuses. Um, at least that's what being, is being proposed now. It has been approved, it's been accepted um, by the council as an overall guide for not just development on Easton Point but up through the corridor of Port Street into connecting whatever happens down in Eastern Point to the town center. Um, I guess the really critical thing about putting the zoning in place down on Eastern Point, the waterfront and the land inward, is to try and 
incentivize development to get something going. Um, and I think that uh, plans are always fluid. Um, master plans uh, are fluid as well. We've got nice pictures on paper about what we want to have, and it would be highly unusual if that didn't change in some way, shape, or form over time as development occurred and we see what is happening. Um, there's a, uh, a hope that uh, all the area covered in this master plan, the Eastern Point, the corridor, all the way up Port Street into the downtown is the standard of living in any of the residences is raised without displacing anybody. Uh, there's not a, there's been a lot of pushback from both county council and the town council on gentrification. That's not what we're after, but raising the bar for everybody and keeping things as affordable as possible without displacing any of the current residents. That's kind of what the end game was hopefully going to be. Well, I think the, uh, first of all, I think we've got really good people in place that are pushing economic development. You've got Ross Benincasa with Easton Business Alliance. I think he's doing a great job. And uh, Tracy Ward with the Easton Economic Development Commission, she's doing a great job. And they work really well together. They're keeping the council apprised of what they're doing. And they're hunting. Um, I don't think the economic health of the town center um, can never be taken for granted. That's something that uh, the people in place have to continually monitor and continually try and get new people in if there's an if there's a empty storefront. And those two organizations are doing a really good job of that. Um, one of the it, I don't know what to do. What more we can do really about trying to get a downtown grocery store. I still think that's a critical element, but um, it's a it's a really tough nut to crack. Um, you've got to have the there's chains that have been uh, approached, but the interest just isn't there for yeah. relocating downtown. So, and uh, these are the big the, the big chains primarily. Yeah, I think the I mean the feeling is that the 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 market is handled, if not saturated, with grocery stores now. Um, if there was a chance for a downtown grocery store, it would probably be more of a niche-oriented entity, and we just haven't had any luck with that so far. I see. Okay. Um, and there's been rumors kicked around about what's going to go on in Safeway, but uh, nothing has come before the council. Nothing is in the queue, as far as I know, about approval for anything. So. Yeah, the, the town ordinance uh, calls for uh, an election, not an appointment. But we felt, um, first of all, our, <clears throat> our docket through the winter since Pete left, and we do miss him, um, but he's doing a great job at the county and will continue to do so, I'm sure. <clears throat> but it was... Um, so we had November, December, and, and the months of this year. We have an election in May. Our docket has not been that busy. So we felt rather than put the town to the expense of a special election just for Ward 2, we would wait and include it in the election on May 7th. So the May 7th election, uh, Mayor Willie has filed for re-election. Councilman Al Silverstein has filed for re-election. Councilman Ralph Engel has filed for re-election. Re That's the mayor, Ward 1 and Ward 3. And two people, Don Abatello and Talbot Bone, have both filed for Pete's vacancy in Ward 2. So there'll be a... Uh, no one else has filed. Uh, so far, the mayor and, and Al Silverstein and Ron Engel are running unopposed, but the filing deadline is April 1 so they could still get competition, but there, there will be a contested election in Ward 2. So that'll be May 7th, 
and uh, we'll, we'll cover that. that yeah. If you were a candidate, I guess you're not running this year, right? No, I'm my current term runs till 2021. Okay. About that, um, there's a there's a push on right now. Um, uh, Eastern Business Alliance is kind of leading that to expand the or to uh, establish an arts and entertainment district oh, in Easton. Yeah. yeah, and that's going to encompass this area downtown, but it's going to also go up Dover Street through the East End section, which uh, we're hoping that that'll help drive a uh, revitalization, uh, reinvigoration of that area. Um, we'll see. Fill in on what that is. It's a, it's a term that I know is bounced around, but I suspect people might not know what the benefits are. Of arts and entertainment? The district, be going through this process to get that. What does it mean for investment? Well, in, it incentivizes um, artists, for one thing, because they get a pretty significant uh, tax breaks if they are performing in an arts and entertainment district and they're from one. So somebody from Cambridge, for instance, could come over here and paint a painting or give a concert and sell that painting or get paid for that concert and wouldn't have to pay tax on those earnings. So it helps drive the, the art community. Um, and we're hoping that'll happen down that way. So it's, a, it's another tool um, in and of itself. It won't drive reinvestment, but it, as an added tool, it could help. Um, I'm still on the board now of the Chesapeake Multicultural Resource Center, which I just think is a tremendous organization. And the probably a lot of folks don't realize um, they see the immigrant immigrant population is probably increasing in Tolva County but on the Eastern Shore Tolva County is getting the bulk of the immigrant immigrant population probably because there's more opportunities here for employment but um, Easton Elementary School for instance the largest demographic in Easton Elementary School are Hispanic kids. There are more Hispanic kids than white kids in that school. Um, that organization, Chesapeake Multicultural Resource Center, is providing immigration services, they provide citizenship classes, they provide help with getting driver's licenses, they run after school programs, they run translation services. They are providing a uh, resource and they cannot even remotely meet the need. Um, they've got a full-time staff of three and a fairly expanded staff of part-time and people work in the programs they do. But um, And one of the things that I wanted to mention about them is they're looking for a new home. They're currently renting uh, space over by where Safeway was in the old Dr. Askew's office. Um, that lease is up in early fall and they're looking for a permanent home because as Math Matthew Peters, the director of that, said, this is not an ephemeral problem um, or an issue. Um, it's yeah. not, it's going to always be with us. So, yeah. and I just have a tremendous amount of admiration for that organization and I'm trying to help them as best I can. Yes. There is um, a significant amount of undocumented uh, immigrants in Tolva County and the Chesapeake Multicultural Resource Center is working really hard to get those folks out of the shadows and and to be a productive member of our community. They're also working really hard to educate the community, especially the business community, about uh, the term they use as cultural competency. Trying to educate uh, the folks that live here now about what the, the culture that these people are bringing with them and how it's different and hopefully instilling a respect for that culture. Um, it's, a, 
it's a challenge. No, I think uh, the I think f for the most part the cultural competency efforts are being met with open arms. Um, Matt Peters and uh, um, he's got somebody else that heads up that program uh, through Chesapeake College, um, and they're they're getting asked by the business community to come and talk about it. Um, I think, and you hit on the point, I think because the demographic is changing so rapidly, um, cultural adjustments for the people that live here can't keep up, maybe. It's, the change is, is coming pretty quickly. Uh, I just want, <coughs> wanted to mention the um, briefly that the efforts the town is undergoing with affordable housing okay. um, and you've <clears throat> you've interviewed the mayor recently so he's probably mentioned the hill project and the houses that are being renovated down there if he didn't no, we, have, <clears throat> we, we focus on the, the bridge okay well there's um, 308 South Street <clears throat> is 99% um, ready for sale and it's going to be in the hundred and thirty thousand dollar range is a three-bedroom house with a one and a half baths um, there's income restrictions for who could buy it but uh, uh, anyone interested in that home there's two more that are currently underway there'll be a total of six renovated homes down there when the when the this portion of that um, effort in the hill is done by the town. Um, There's a really, really nice job on this house and a really nice opportunity for somebody to get a good home. In some people's minds, there's a stigma about that area, um, which hopefully this renovation uh, effort by the town is going to dispel. Uh, I think as soon as people start moving in there, especially these nice homes and there's Habitat for Humanity is working down in there to to redo some homes, the Buffalo Soldier Home with the um, Housing Authority of Tolba County is redoing that. There's a lot of work being done down there, so it's a it's a changing neighborhood. So we're hoping the, that this is going to uplift the the whole neighborhood. Um, the Easton uh, Affordable Housing Board is is overseeing purchase potential purchasers for those homes that I just mentioned. They're also uh, operating a renovation program for homeowners that, uh, that if they meet the income criteria, they can get anywhere from a grant to an interest-free loan to a low-interest loan, depending on their income level, and they can get up to $12,500 a year to do livability improvements to their home. Typically we've been doing roof replacements, uh, new HVAC systems, um, ADA accessibility issues. Uh, just it's a terrific program. They've done 10 projects so far. They've given out about $70,000 worth of work, but they have money and it's depending on your income level it could be free um, just we're hoping to get uh, more people involved and get get more people's uh, livability standards raised so